most of us know, uh, coconut uh, is a tree of life uh, in in the region. Uh, so it the uh, livelihood of uh, uh, of our people is very much uh, dependent on on coconut uh, as a as a cash crop, uh, as well as uh, food security. CRB is is a is a very serious pest of oil palm plus coconut and also coconut. Uh, and for us, you know, oil palm uh, specifically, uh, is, it, it is a high concern, especially during replant where, where the palm is young. CRB damage it, uh, the beetle actually bow through by a tunneling behavior. It bow through the center of the we say a, a palm is the crown what they can do to control CRB but it's also increasing the research capacity um, and skills of the local teams as well to, to manage CRB and other biosecurity. Um, hi, I'm Tanya Robinson, so I am the program manager for the Pacific Response to Coconut Rhinoceros Beetle Program. Um, I'm actually based over in Honiara but I am working across the, the program. I know that you've sort of heard from a few of the other people, the team members that are also within the CRB task force. And yeah, I basically just help, help things along um, and make sure the program is achieving, achieving goals and the partners are working together. Richard Dickery is my name. Uh, I work for PNZ Oil Palm Research Association. Uh, I work as a research officer uh, in the crop protection uh, section. PNZ Opera is, uh, was formed in 1980, yeah, and it was about 13 years after the oil palm came into to Papua New Guinea. So, uh, PNG Operation is a dedicated research and development uh, related oil palm uh, organization, uh, research institute. Uh, generally, it's focused on on research on improving various aspects of oil palm production, yeah, including agronomy, plant health. Uh, smallholder and sustainable farming practices. Yeah, so basically, it plays a critical role. Yeah, uh, generating knowledge and also providing practical solutions uh, to the challenges faced by oil palm growers. Yeah, so its research findings and recommendations helps improve uh, oil palm yields, quality, and environmental sus environment sustainability. Yeah. So basically, PNG Opera collaborates with farmers government, industry stakeholders, and also international partners yeah, to share knowledge, promote best practices, uh, contribute to the whole palm sector in PNC. So uh, generally, PNC Opera functions to drive research and innovations in oil palm cultivation, supporting growth and sustainability yeah. uh, in the industry, considering also the economic, social, and environmental uh, aspects. My name is Mark Harrow. Uh, I am the project manager for the Pacific Awareness and Response to the Coconut Rhinoceros Beetle Project, uh, and that is based with the uh, with SPC or the Pacific Community, uh, based in uh, in Suva, Fiji, uh, and uh, yeah, the, the the project is funded by uh, by MFED. SPC is a is a regional uh, organization for the Pacific, uh, and it has uh, uh, 27 members uh, within the, the region. That includes the uh, the countries uh, as well as the the territories, uh, and uh, uh, New Zealand, uh, Australia, uh, UK, uh, UK, USA. Uh, and uh, and France are also uh, funded members, uh, so it comprises of uh, around 27 uh, members. Most of us know uh, coconut uh, is a tree of life uh, in in the region, uh, so it. Uh, livelihood of uh, 
uh, of our people is very much uh, dependent on, on coconut uh, as, a, as a cash crop, uh, as well as uh, food security. So a lot of uh, people depend on, on coconut uh, for, 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 for their livelihood. And uh, not only that, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, coastline and, uh, and the coastlines and the, the landscape, uh, coconut, uh, you know, beautifies the place and then it uh, makes our, our coastline uh, look, uh, look nice. Uh, and uh, not only uh, coconut that they affect, uh, for PNG and uh, Solomon Islands, uh, the, uh, the coconut rhinoceros beetle also attacks uh, oil palm. So as we know, uh, oil palm in PNG is the, is the biggest uh, agricultural uh, in, uh, for the country, uh, country so that's, uh, that's uh, one of the, uh, the major uh, concerns as well. And they can also attack uh, other, other food crops as well if coconuts and oil palm are gone. So they've been uh, uh, recorded from crops like uh, uh, pineapple, uh, banana, sugarcane, uh, popo as well. So yeah, it's, it's also a, 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 a major food security issue. CRB is, is, a, is a very serious pest of oil palm plus coconut and also coconut. Uh, and for us, you know, oil palm uh, specifically, uh, it, it is a high concern, especially during replant where, where the palm is young. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To liberate more, like uh, you find that damage on coconut, uh, on oil palm or the coconut on the younger fronts. Yeah. So we say front, front between front four and front six, which are more softer. CRB damage it, uh, the beetle actually bow through by a tunneling behavior. It bow through the center of the, we say, a, a palm is the crown, is where the leaf, you find the leaves are. So uh, it bows through and then in the center, and eventually it causes the, you know, by doing this, it, it injures the palm and it damages the front, uh, creating a V notch. Uh, you, you will see a coconut leaf and you see the kind of weed knots, yeah. So it that's the damage pretty much, it's caused. Uh, now, uh, so the, the hatek hawkers, it occurs through, oh, by boring uh, in a short horizontal uh, section in, into the, you know, center of the crown and then it bows down again in a much longer vertical uh, tunnel, uh, it, it goes down, and that's where it finds the the growing cluster or the apical meristem. Yeah, and then by doing by doing that, what what the beetle does, it it bores through, and it feeds from the sap that produced from from the boring. Yeah, that's just how the beetle is feeding. So, uh, and it takes about now one boring, one beetle boring through. It can affect about nine nine fronts by doing that. Of, of a front, yeah, it can do that. Yeah. Now, also, uh, because the bow, the beetle bow only once, and then it, it doesn't bow out, right? Normally, it's been observed that it grows up as soon as the front grows up, it brings out the beetle, and eventually, it comes up. It takes about ten days, let's say, and then it comes out and it flies off. Yeah. And in terms of you. Uh, you're seeing the damage, right? Like the first instance that you see the damage, and then half the, because when the beetle bows, we won't observe it because it's inside, right? You, we, can't, we can't really see the damage occurring. But after that, when the new suit goes up, that's where we observe it, yeah. And when we observe it, the actual damage was caused like back then, yeah. And it takes about 113 days. For, for us to, you know, phenotypically or see with our eyes the actual damage caused by the people in about four months. At the moment, you have West New Britain, uh, it's, it's affected, as well as uh, New Ireland. So uh, basically, you got whole oil palm provinces are uh, hand on on that uh, invasive pest species. 
wherever there's oil palm growing, you know, there's a threat of the inflation. We put the compost, mixture of soil, sawdust, and chicken manure. So we create a good breeding site for the beetle and allow it to come in. So before we put the beetle in, we dose some of the beetles with the artificial metal regime, the fungus that will help to kill the beetles. So in oil palm, uh, what we do is uh, the growers, uh, by the harvest that you know, SPN job are doing, we carry out harvest and, and from those harvest we tell the growers how they can observe the damage on oil palm as well as in you know, the involved. And then from there, they, they report it. Uh, there's a specific procedure that they use or we use. And then we record it through our, our partners as well within the industry. So we got the, the technical uh, the extension, we as researchers. So the extension uh, harm, uh, which is OPIC, yeah, they also help us you know, reporting that. So the growth comes to OPIC and OPIC comes to the job. The project is funded by uh, the New Zealand government uh, through MFED. Uh, so they have uh, two trenches of funding that, that, that comes through. Uh, the research component is, uh, is, uh, is funded to AgriSet New, uh, New Zealand. Uh, and for, the, uh, for SPC, uh, they are supporting the, uh, the awareness, uh, the monitoring and surveillance. Uh, as well as the uh, the management uh, aspects uh, with the uh, the management uh, tools that we already have uh, with us, uh, so so that's that's where the funding is coming from. This particular program, um, we're working with Papua New Guinea. Uh, within within here, where I am, obviously at the moment, we're working with Coconut Industries Corporation, uh, Nakia, and also PNG Opera, All Palm Research as, um, Association as well. So there's a partners in country here. We're working in the Solomon Islands with the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock, and also one of the major coconut producers there, Coconut Pacific Solomon Islands. And in Vanuatu, we're working with Vanuatu Biosecurity as well, they're at the Biosecurity Department. Um, also part of the program is about upskilling capacity and capability. Um, we've got an incredible team here of, of young plant pathologists and plant health and, and entomologists, um, which makes the job much easier. Uh, but it is about sort of also showing um, not only farmers what they can do to control CRB, but it's also increasing the research capacity um, and skills of the local teams as well to, to manage CRB and other biosecurity um, threats. So obviously the reason why it's so important um, to stop this is once CRB reaches things like the Outer Atoll Islands and some of those other countries, um, it, coconut is an incredibly important food source and livelihood opportunity as well. For some people it is their only means to make money, um, to pay for things like education, for fuel for boats and those sorts of things. Uh, for others, it's their only means of food um, as well, and islands, so food, shelter and, and water as well if there hasn't been rainfall. So yeah, it's very important for us to be able to protect these um, and then obviously um, build the capability of the countries to manage that themselves as well. This one is funded by the New Zealand Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, and Trade. It's one of the aid programs. It's an $18 million program, or New Zealand dollars, and the goals of the program are obviously to try and suppress coconut rhinoceros beetle. So at the moment it is spreading, unfortunately it's still spreading. There is a new, a new strain of the beetle um, that we, was first found in Guam, and this strain of the beetle is causing a lot of damage in Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, and it has just recently arrived in the last two years in Vanuatu as well. So we're working across those three countries there. What we're trying to do is just stop it spreading into other provinces, um, and where it's established, we're trying to minimise the damage. Uh, that's through sanitation activity, so that sanitation means, you know, keeping your, your gardens and your plantations clean to reduce the breeding, breeding grounds that the beetle will obviously very quickly grow in numbers, uh, and, and trying to sort of cut down dead t um, standing palms as well. So, yeah, there's a few things. Keeping, keeping your plantation clean and getting removing breeding material, um, including the dead palms as well. 
and stopping it and shifting it around so whether that's by boat um, or, or vehicular as well because we do see a lot of spread along, along roads or where there's a lot of traffic going between markets and things as well. Look here, if it's got this tuft of air around then that's a female, if it's smooth that's male. Uh, they do have their own, but uh, that's, that's not a good character to differentiate. The, the males do have their own, but that's not a piece for, for some of the males. It's reduced, so you can't use that to set them apart. What we initially need to do is, uh, we, we also carry out uh, what we call delimiting survey uh, to ascertain where uh, the beetles have already, uh, uh, already spread to. Uh, where and where the CRB uh, free areas are. So once we've uh, established that, then the, the key now is look at uh, the options on how we can prevent uh, the beetles from getting uh, from the islands where uh, they've already uh, established to the, 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 the islands which are, which are free of the beetle. And the mode of uh, spread is uh, uh, true because the, the, the beetle breeds in uh, organic matter. So if we carry any soil particles, uh, sand aggregates, uh, or any planting materials uh, with, uh, with, with uh, soil uh, or uh, potted mixed uh, plants, uh, if we get them from uh, places where they've uh, already established, uh, to, to places where uh, they, they have not established, then we have uh, the chances of the beetle uh, uh, being, uh, being within, uh, within those uh, substrates uh, and then get into new areas to establish. So we just need to take a bit of responsibility to, to make sure that we don't carry uh, those things around from one place to another uh, to spread the, the beetle as well. Uh, and also, apart from that, the, the beetle itself is, uh, uh, is uh, what we call nocturnal. They are active in the, in the night uh, and they also get attracted to, to light. So uh, whenever the boats leave the sites uh, where they are established in the night and have the lights on, uh, they can get down to the boats and then eat uh, on the boats to areas where uh, they, they, they are free of the beetle. So we just need to have uh, 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 a monitoring system in place where when beetles come from places where they are uh, established to uh, beetle uh, free areas, we need to check and then make sure that there's no beetles uh, on the boats to, 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 to get to. So that's, that's the situation uh, with, uh, uh, with the entire region. Is, uh, we are isolated and most of our travels are usually uh, with, uh, on board. Uh, yeah, there's, there, there are chances of uh, yeah, the beetle getting on, uh, on them and then spreading to, to new areas. In general, I would say I, a photo growers, you know, CRB is a serious pest. Uh, and if we do not, you know, report it or observe our blocks, even coconut and oil palm included, then we might be at high risk of, you know, losing crop because especially for oil palm, the growers highly depend on it, right? Yeah, and you've got different categories of growers and, you know, village growers, village oil palm, they call them, and the customer rights pests. And then you have the land settlement scheme, uh, you know, the, customer, the, the CRP or the customer right pets growers and the LSS, they, they don't have like lands for them to go and you know, start uh, useful gardening out. But I mean, they have, but it's quite smaller than the VOPs. Yeah. So, you know, they entirely, the message is they entirely depend on, on the crop. And uh, sometimes you put a blank eye on not seeing the damages in our, in our blocks and we don't report it on time. And, and at the end, we, you, you find out that you know, the crop is lost and you lose money and, and it affects your family. So, and yeah. so uh, the message is to be 
very vigilant about it and report it to the authorities as soon as you use it. Message to to the gross uh, is that uh, yeah, it's a it's a serious issue, uh, and the uh, the stakeholders can only do what they can uh, in terms of uh, of the support they can provide. Uh, but the main thing is uh, for them to also uh, take ownership of the the issue. Uh, and then try to manage the 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 the, the uh, coconut uh, uh, coconut uh, plantations or the, the coconut farms, uh, and uh, one of the main things that that they, they can do is uh, sanitation, uh, which is cleaning up uh, of the the breeding sites. Uh, so any uh, coconuts that have been killed, uh, they need to chop them down, uh, and then. Uh, split them into smaller pieces uh, and they can use it for firewood uh, or uh, or for some other other yeah, other uh, things uh, that they can use the wood for so cleanup will be very important uh, and not only the the coconut itself but uh, any other organic matter as well like uh, uh, chicken manure sawdust uh, and uh, yeah uh, and other domestic uh, green waste, uh, they can breed in there so long as they're moist for them to, to breed. So we just need to keep the place uh, clean to, to prevent the, uh, the beetle from establishing.